Now my favorite topic. Without including TLS into picture, I am going to explain TLS to you. Don't worry, we will be taking TLS in a more formal way. But as I promised, <coughs> I am going to combine these three concepts, confidentiality, integrity, and authentication. Interesting, right? So what is happening, guys? Just 10 more minutes of your concentration. Just 10 minutes. <laughs> At the end of the day, what we are doing here, Miss, sorry, this is Miss Anjali. Miss Anjali is make one, or Anjali wants to make a transaction with HDFC Bank. And she is saying, hi, HDFC Bank server, I would like to do a transaction of rupees 5,000 with you. This is the simple message. At the end of the day, whatever we have studied till now, encryption, confidentiality, so many things, right? At the end of the day, the goal is this message should go as it is to HDFC bank server. Irrespective of the fact how many intruders we have in the middle, no intruder can ever open this message, right? So what Anjali actually doing? Anjali is sending a simple message to HDFC bank. This is in the plain text. Anjali is saying, Mr. HDFC bank server, I will be using advanced encryption standard algorithm to encrypt my messages. And by the way, AES is actually your symmetric encryption, right? Anjali is going to say, I will be using SHA-256 for message integrity. Are you ready to communicate with me? And of course, I will be using RSA to generate my private and public keys really really interesting at the end of the day i cannot send hi i want to do 5000 rupees transaction in plain text because that is the whole sole purpose we are reading it right and this message by the way in somewhat formal term is known as hello anjali is saying hello to hdfc bank server she's saying i would like to send you a message with encryption algorithm known as aes most of you had this question how HDFC bank server comes to know that which algorithm is used by Anjali. This is how HDFC bank server knows. And this information can be seen by any intruder. That is perfectly fine. No doubt about it. When HDFC bank server sees this, HDFC bank server is going to say, Anjali, I can do, I can understand AES because I know AES. I'm ready to do, I'm ready to decrypt your message using AES. I can check the message integrity using SHA-256 and I can also generate my public key and private key using RSK. As simple as that. And most of the guys who get confused with this communication just try to understand there are two different connections. One is from Anjali to HDFC bank. One is from HDFC bank to server. And that is the main problem happens when I explain people uh, transmission control protocol, right? In TCP also. Because at the end of the day, if I explain you TLS, TLS is built on top of uh, uh, top of uh, uh, top of TCP. In TCP also, there are two connections, right? I send SYN, server send ACK. Server send SYN, I send ACK, but the middle two messages are combined. That is why it is known as SYN ACK. But there are two different streams. One is from client to server, the other is from server to client. If you get this point, this is going to be great to understand this. <laughs> Anjali said hello to HDFC bank server. HDFC bank server said hello to Anjali. But along with that, HDFC bank server is so sure about it that I do not want that this communication can be compromised. So he is more, uh, what we can say, concerned about this communication. And it is sending its certificate to Miss Anjali. See the beauty. You all know how HDFC bank server got the certificate. HDFC bank server must have generated the CSR request. And the certificate authorities has been uh, signed that certificate uh, signing request. And this guy is having the certificate. In the third step, HDFC bank server is sending this certificate. And it is saying by sending this certificate that this is my common name. See, you are trying to con contact hdfcbank.com. See that whether this certificate has hdfcbank.com or not. This is my name. It should be correct. 
Anjali is going to check it. HDFC Bank Server is saying, please verify my certificate. I have signed this certificate using a supreme authority, which is certificate authority, this one, which may be DigiCert. Anjali is going to check its laptop. Anjali is going to check its Chrome browser. In Chrome browser, it is going to find, okay, Anjali says, HDFC Bank Server, I can see that you are saying that this certificate is signed by DigiCert. I am going to check whether I have the public key of DigiCert or not. And if this Chrome is a good browser, which, is, which it is, you are going to find certificate authority public key here, which is M. Using this M, Anjali can verify that this certificate is signed by certificate authority. There is no doubt about it. And you all know that the certificate is going to contain K, which is the public key of HDFC Bank Server. So till now, what is happening? First thing first, negotiation is going on. Negotiation between Anjali and HDFC Bank Server. Negotiation of what? What algorithm for encryption we are going to use? What algorithm for integrity we are going to use? As simple as that. In the second step, HDFC Bank Server is saying, do not do communication with me until and unless you know me, until and unless you are sure that I am HDFC Bank Server. And that is why it is sending its certificate. And Anjali's responsibility is to verify the certificate. Once Anjali verifies the certificate, Anjali is absolutely sure about it, that it is or she is talking to HDFC Bank Server. It means that in second step, authentication is done. Really, really interesting. Now let's talk about third step. As you all know, that the data exchange, now the whole sole purpose is, see, all these things are fine. HDFC Bank Server, Anjali has identified, but the whole sole point is, I need to encrypt this message and send. I can do this with two ways. I can use the asymmetric encryption. I can use the symmetric encryption. But the problem is, if I use asymmetric encryption to encrypt my data, it is not going to be processor. It is uh, it is not going to be pro uh, uh, processor uh, friendly. I have to use symmetric encryption. But to use symmetric encryption, Anjali is going to generate a key. Say Anjali generated a key which is one, two, three, four, five, and now this key should be with HDFC Bank Server also. Why? Because Anjali encrypts something, HDFC Bank Server had to decrypt it. So he has to decrypt it. How it is going to decrypt? You all know I have the public key of HDFC Bank Server. I will take one, two, three, four, five. I will encrypt this using public key of K, which is HDFC Bank Server key from where Anjali got, from the certificate, it is going to send this here. HDFC Bank Server is going to open it using the private key and it is going to get this key 12345. Now, two parties, both of them have the same symmetric key. They can do the encryption using symmetric key. But to enable this symmetric key encryption at the first play, we are using asymmetric key encryption to send the symmetric key. Just try to understand the previous statement. So what is done now? Negotiation, done. Confidence, uh, authentication, done. Because I have authenticated HDFC Bank Server. Encryption, I am ready to do that. Why? Because both the parties, Anjali as well as HDFC Bank Server, both have this key. Really, really interesting. Now you must be thinking, Mr. Vishnu, tell me, where is integrity? I know you are combining confidentiality, you have combined authentication. Where is the integrity? And that is where this is going to come into picture. Suppose Anjali is sending high. What Anjali is going to do? Anjali will be taking this high, encrypt, uh, uh, it is passing it through the SHA algorithm and it is placing it right here. Right? And then she encrypts the message. Once she encrypts the message, it is going to be here. At the destination, I can. I can check the, I can decrypt the message. After decryption of message, I can run SHA algorithm to check whether my message integrity is there or not. If it is there, I have managed integrity also. What I am doing here, try to understand guys. First thing first, I have negotiated what I am going to use in the form of my algorithm. Second thing, I have authenticated HDFC Bank Server. In the process, I got the HDFC Bank Server public key. I will be sending my secret key or symmetric key using this uh, key K. 
so that only hdfc bank server can open it both side i have the key now i can encrypt it and in the process i can do the message integrity also as simple as that but still believe me i haven't completed tls tls board we will be starting in tomorrow's class and now you are in 100% situation to understand nitty gritties of ssl and tls this much information you needed to understand ssl and tls right but we will be starting this topic tomorrow today i would like to take your any question till this point because i wanted to combine cia right confidentiality authentication and integrity although a means availability there but to me if i explain uh, authentication integrity and confidentiality it is going to be full flesh protocol we can see the same thing in ipsec we can see the same thing in ssl2 having said that i am all open for your question mr daniel you can ask your question please go ahead thank you guru question when we say this is actually using ads uh, yes, or, or the the hash of the where are these values to find are they also in the user browser or are they operating system where, where are all these values to find which should be used yeah this is defined in ssl protocol itself which we haven't discussed so basically okay. uh, basically see at the end of the day application is going to generate the data hi i want to do 5000 rupees transaction right this will be yes. taken care by uh, the application layer and in application layer we have implemented a protocol known as ssl before sending this data hi i want to do 5000 rupees transaction ssl come into picture right because this application maybe the chrome is saying i do not want to send this data in plain text i want to encrypt it that is where ssl or tls come into picture right and now when oh. ssl takes over it is going to create some things and that is what i am going to explain you in the next board here tomorrow okay and there is also also can explain when the, the values don't match on the other side uh -huh. what alternative mechanism can be used yeah if the right. values don't match suppose if anjali is saying that i am only capable of doing aes and if hdfc bank says no i don't understand aes believe me there is not going to be any communication negotiation is not happening if negotiation is not there there is not going to be any communication sometime that is why we send cipher suits what is the meaning of cipher suits i will be letting you know anjali send so many uh, algorithms maybe 20 25 algorithm to hdfc bank and hdfc bank is going to say that i and there is basically again an algorithm to select which one is the best so the best algorithm among among them is negotiated and both client and server or anjali and hdfc bank server has to negotiate that which algorithm they are going to use for encryption which algorithm they are going to use for integrity which algorithm they have used for uh, these key generation okay perfect thank you very much perfect mr vikramaditya ji please ask your question please go ahead yeah vishnu sir i i i got confused in in one of the things mm -hmm. uh, that you have written this 1 2 3 4 5 and you have encrypted using i mean k so could you just explain this thing early, uh, like again uh, i'm not like uh, really understood this thing okay no problems no problems yeah but you agree with me uh, mr vikramaditya that mm -hmm. can i call your name as vikram vikram is fine right correct correct yeah yeah correct yeah so mr vikram you agree with mm -hmm. me that asymmetric encryption is going to be costly for the cpu right yeah that's correct that is why we are going to use symmetric encryption for symmetric encryption both the parties should have the same key one two three four five right this mm -hmm. key can be generated by angeli angeli can use any key for the symmetric encryption but mm -hmm. how this key is going to be there with the hdfc bank we need to make sure that that we can exchange this key over this internet securely you agree with me that hdfc bank server should have one two three four five or not uh yes since it's bi direction communication so server should also have yeah so basically if i encrypt something with 1 2 3 4 5 hdfc bank server should decrypt it using 1 2 3 5 this is the whole soul agenda of symmetric encryption right but right. now the whole soul point is how hdfc bank is going to know what secret key or what symmetric key is used by anjali and that is where the trick is coming into picture 
Anjali knows the public key of HDFC mm-hmm. Bank. You agree mm-hmm. with me in this certificate? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And if and what is the relationship between this K and L? K is the public key of HDFC Bank server. L is the private yeah. key of HDFC Bank server. If I encrypt using public key, only private mm. key can open. And who is having the private key? Only this server, HDFC Bank server, because we never share private, never share private key. You agree with me? Mm-hmm. That is why, Correct. because and that is why we were sending this key in the certificate, this public key. Anjali is mm-hmm. going to use one two three four because she want to send this data, this key over this insecure medium internet securely. Because if she send one two three four, anybody can read. Mm-hmm. So what the trick she is doing is she is encrypting this message. Maybe using any algorithm. Maybe suppose say any algorithm, which is the public key or private key based. Maybe RSA algorithm she is using, and she is mm-hmm. using the public key of HDFC Bank. Okay, because we need any key to encrypt something, right? Now mm-hmm. you tell me, who in this world can open this message to get one, two, three, four, five? Anyone having the public key of uh, HDFC server? No, that is the relationship. Means if I encrypt with the public key, I can open with the private key. If I encrypt with the private key, I can open with the public key. If I encrypt with the public key, public through public key, I cannot open it. Correct. Yeah. Right. So now tell me mm-hmm. who is going to who can open this HDFC bank server certificate? Sorry, this only only, only HDFC, HDFC bank, bank yeah. server. Nobody else because HDFC bank server has the private key here, yeah. mm-hmm. corresponding yeah. private key. Yeah. Okay. okay. But you need. I think you missed this por- portion that if I encrypt with K, then I can only decrypt with L. Not even with K. Okay. Uh, ah. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If I Correct. encrypt with L, which is the private key, I can open with the only public key, and this is digital signature. This is your encryption. So basically, in the digital signature, just rewind the video. Just go into uh, go into mm-hmm. two videos back. Mm-hmm. Okay, and see, yeah. I am using see, and that is why I I would like to explain you one last thing here. Mm-hmm. In confidentiality, if I want to do encryption, if I want to send a message to Mr. Rahul. i am going to send this message using public key of rahul so that only rahul can open it right this is known as encryption you got it yeah in case of authentication or in case of digital signature i am doing something different i take this message i signed it using my private, private key, key. Right? right this is as good yeah. as i i am signing the uh, i am signing the check which can be seen by anybody who can mm-hmm. open if somebody wants to verify it that guy should have the public key to verify it because i have encrypted yeah. using private so in confidentiality i am using public key to encrypt and private key to decrypt in digital mm-hmm. signature i am using my private key to encrypt and the receiver is going to use my public key to decrypt try yeah. to understand the difference between con- and i am yeah. I, I, believe me mr vikram i am so thankful mm-hmm. to you that you brought this con- uh, thing so that anybody who is going to listen maybe after 10 15 uh, days or maybe 10 15 years this video they are going to get it because of you only and that is why if you ask question the course is going to be fantastic thank you so much yeah thank you welcome mr ashwin mm-hmm. please go ahead and ask your question <clears throat> uh i wish no mm-hmm. hi so my question is regarding data right uh, integrity is done uh, after the encryption or before that only uh before the encryption okay yeah before after the encryption if i do then basically anybody can change it and change the so the message integrity cannot be there so if i encrypt it if i do the uh, encryption uh, sorry if i do the uh, hashing first and then encrypt i think if you go back some videos or one or two video where i explain this hashing concept you will get to know mr ashwin but to answer your question we are uh, hashing and then encrypt okay perfect mr prashant patel ji please go ahead and ask your question yeah yeah vishnu ji so uh, my question is regarding the browser settings where we saw that uh, uh, public key of the uh, certificate authority yeah, yeah. okay uh-huh. is, is this uh, same for all the bank servers like hdfc icic sbi is it same for all the bank servers yeah public so key? it depends that which certificate authority it signed so let's, Now, let's assume that uh, they are using the same dg cert ha huh, then then everything is going to be same so okay. see let's take an example this is again a, a fantastic question believe me we have hdfc bank server here suppose right 
and we have ICICI Bank. Do you agree with me that here I have uh, K and L? This is the public key and this is the private key, suppose. And similarly here, suppose I have X and Y. This is my public key and this is my private key. What is going to happen? I am going to digicert. This is my certifying authority, although this is offline mode and GeoTrust is going to sign it. But to make things simple, I am saying, suppose DigiCert is signing, right? And most of the enterprise scenario, the lab which I'm going to create is going to be this way only. HDFC Bank will go to this uh, uh, certificate authority, CSR, and it is going to sign the certificate, right? And this is known as the digital certificate or the identity certificate of HDFC Bank server because it is identifying HDFC Bank. Why? Because DigiCert has put its signature here. What DigiCert is going to use? Suppose it is using M and N, it is going to use its private key here to encrypt whatever the CSR document it is sending. And right. So this signature is will be here. Which private key is part of this uh, certificate? K. Now suppose ICIC Bank is also going here. It is sending the CSR request and and of course the common name, place and other information including the public key are going to be different than HDFC Bank server. DigiCert is also going to sign it. It is going to produce another certificate. It is going to do the signature, but the signature are going to be dependent on this data because how we are generating the uh, uh, digital uh, signature, we are taking the certificate data, common name, public key and all, making the hash out of it and then encrypt it using my private key. This is my, so this signature and this signature are going to be different, but the signature is of DigiCert only. Do you agree, Mr. Uh, Prashant? Yes, thank you, Shanti. Perfect. And uh, I have uh, one more question regarding the previous board. Uh -huh, go ahead. So we saw that uh, point one, two, three, four after that key exchange. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so um, are we going to do the uh, integrity and encryption at the same time? Integrity and actually... uh, first integrity and then encryption. But believe me, don't worry. I will be, see, I have just combined them, right? But in the formal way, I am going to combine them tomorrow. TLS, still half an hour concept is still remaining in the TLS or SSL handshake. I will be explaining it, okay? So tomorrow, our fundamental portion of the network security is done sorry, of identity services engine course is done, we can then come back again to the authentication piece in case of identity services engine. And with this knowledge, if you go and understand, believe me, some things are going to be very easy for you. Anybody else, any other questions? I have I have a question, yes, I have a question. Mr. Augusto, please go ahead. Yes. Yeah. We lost you, I think, Mr. Augusto, or you are on mute. I think you are on mute. You are, hello? Yeah, go ahead. Yes, um, uh, we know uh, in case of confidentiality, um, uh, when we encrypt the data, we use a public key uh, and to decrypt with private key. Yeah. Right? Okay, and when we authentication, uh, we use private to decrypt with public. Private right? to encrypt, uh, public to decrypt, yeah. Okay, uh, what about um, integrity? Yeah, that is what I'm saying that basically if I, that is why I am sending this thing or the negotiation in the first step that I am going to use SHA-256 for integrity. First thing first, if I tell about one, two, three, four, five, I haven't told you that one, two, three, four, five is basically exchange using key K after encryption. But of course, I can definitely use integrity also here. First, I'm going to uh, encrypt it, sorry, uh, hash it, and then encrypt using K. So that this one, two, three, four, five, when reaches here, HDFC bank server can say the message or this secret key, secret keys integrity is intact during the communication, right? And I can do. So basically integrity, the SHA is going to be first and then we are going to encrypt. Mr. Augusto. Yes. Okay. Um... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go, go, go ahead. I'm a li I'm, I'm, huh. I'm little bit confused, but okay. It is fine. Till this point, if you are confused where we are going to include integrity into this picture, that is okay. Yes. Don't worry. Because okay. I am going to repeat this again when I explain SSL formally to you. 